Good morning and welcome to the calculus in the PM. Calculus in the AM. Good morning. It's sunny out. And it's sunny outside and we got a high of 26 today. The weather is looking great. Traffic is flowing beautifully on College Avenue and right now we have some children, children, young adults, adults, calculating values of E. What are we doing? We're just at least getting familiar. What is this? button on the calculator me. We're just evaluating. Finish this and then I'll give you further direction. Make sure you can use your calculator to get these values. We round up to three. What I want you to do now, I said examine the graphs of these functions. I've graphed e to the x. Incidentally, what does the graph of 2 to the x look like from last year? Quick review. Someone do it with their hand. Yep. And if it's 2 to the x, it passes through 1, right? e to the x will pass through 1 at 0, right? 10 to the x also has this general shape. The exponential functions, plural, have that shape of the x is positive x, right? If it was negative, it would just go like this. It's backwards on the axis. So what I want you to do is I have on your next pages. I've graphed the exponential function e to the x, y equals e to the x, with a tangent line at 0. Now why would I put a tangent line at 0? Because what's a derivative? You guys remember? The slope of a tangent line. Yeah, a derivative gives you a formula that could tell you the slope of the tangent line <laughs> at a given domain. I've drawn here, I'm drawing you the tangent line, and my recording button here is covering up a second point. You can come up with, with these two ordered pairs, a slope for the tangent line. You're going to estimate it, right? Then, the next graph, when the tangent line x equals 1, you're going to use these two pairs to come up with the slope of that tangent. And then the slope of the tangent line when x equals 2, and I've drawn it in here, right? This is the same function every time, e to the x. But I've given you two ordered pairs every time, and you guys know how to come up with slopes, right? Darn two, right? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You've got to use your calculator to do that, and you've got to fill in these charts. Now, do you guys feel rusty on this, or what? It braved it, because I hope you're not lost. So, let's just see here. Slow. Y2 minus Y1. Ah. Don't do as I say, do as I do. Jeez. Oh, I really, what the devil? Oh, I didn't disappear. I'm on top of it. Okay, take a look. Then, at the first page, I'll do the first one. It's an easier one. It's arithmetic. I want to use a calculator. But, the slope at x comma y. The slope at, oh, I should go back here. What does this mean? This is the slope at x zero comma one, right? The y value is one here. So what's the slope of the tangent line at zero comma one? Here's the tangent line. You can see it looks like it's drawn, and I've calculated it using calculus, what this is, and then drew it in there, okay? I did this. So we've got 3 comma 4, 0 comma 1. We'll remember this, eh? 3 comma 4, 0 comma 1. So the slope, y2 minus y1, is 3 comma 4, so 4 minus 3 minus, the other point was 0 and 1, just as indicated here. 3 minus, or 4 minus 1, 3 minus 0. So, I don't need a calculator for this one. It's 1. Right? Do the other three with your calculator. Okay, after calculating the slopes of the tangent lines that were drawn in very carefully by myself. 15 years ago, I didn't have a smart board and stuff like this, and we were doing the slopes by hand and stuff like this. 
we still come to the same conclusion. It was, it was a whole hour, though, that we'd do this, you can imagine. Right? Anyways, so I figured now I'd grab this. What does this tell you? Because the slope of a tangent line, right, is called a derivative, really. It's, the derivative is a function, or a formula that gives you the slope of the tangent line. So, in other words, for this function, y equals e to the x, when you have that, what do you suspect the derivative's formula is? Because you keep getting the same value that you've got with the regular function, so what makes most sense? That is the same thing. This seems stupid, but dy by dx is equal to, for this function, e to the x. It seems absurd. But, do you guys realize what this means? No. No, and, it, and, it's, and this is why I think of it as philosophically quite interesting. I always wanted people to work this backwards here. Okay. At y equals 1 on this function, what's the slope of this tangent line? It's 1. At y equals, because it's, it's the e to the x, right? That is repeated again. This value here, at 9. Now, I don't know exactly what it is, 2.1-ish, you know, but... Anyways, oh, at 9, what would the slope of the tangent line be there? 9. E to the something gives me 9. It tells me that at 4, if I drew the tangent line there, what would the slope of that line be? 4. Do, do you guys kind of get it? Like, it, it's at, well, take a look at this here, as you approach, like the 0. At point 0.5, right here, if I drew a tangent line, and, and I'm very crooked. 0.5 would be the tangent line. At decimal 1 over here or something like that, the tangent line would be decimal 1, the slope of the tangent line. Right? Just the slope, not the full equation. It seems very odd, but that's why as your y values get larger, this gets steeper because the slope of the tangent line gets steeper, right? It's a very odd formula because you think back and like you guys were doing things like uh, the tangent, well, I'll just draw x squared plus 4 here, right? just for example. I'll just draw a portion of it. And here, there's no connection. And actually, x squared plus 4, what's the derivative? 2x, right? So when you did this, the slopes of the tangents were definitely not matching what the y values were. Right? They got bigger and bigger as you went to the right, but then on the left side, it was a little different. There was no connection really like that. This is very odd behavior. It's interesting behavior from a mathematical point of view. This is a function that is its own derivative. That's what we're saying. Now that's, so if I say f of x is equal to e to the x, find f prime of x, you would just quickly write down if f of x is equal to e to the x, f prime of x is e to the x. It's that simple. The only, it's not even a monkey wrench. There are variations when you have e to the 2x or something like that. Let's just play around though because we've got the skills. Let's take a look. Now, we'll carefully do these derivatives here. If y equals 3x squared, let's think about how we did this. dy by dx. Now, I am hoping, I'm going to slow us down. Really, what are you doing? You're going three times 2x. Now, I'm slowing this down because I know you guys would skip straight into 6x, right? So does this make sense? Now, the reason why I'm doing this is to set us up. Three times some function, x squared, you just take three times the derivative of that x squared, right? So what if I had three times e to the x? 3 times some function is 3 times the derivative of that function, right? It's going to be 3 times e to the x. 3 e to the x. 
not too shallow. How about this next one? Uh-oh. We got some rules now. Both of these things have x's in. We got x to the 6 times e to the x. Do you guys remember what rule we use? She's got it. 6 x to the 5. Hello. I'm disrupting, I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. As mentioned, derivative of the first thing, 6x to the 5, second thing left alone, e to the x. Plus, Plus derivative is the same thing, though, e to the x. Now, you could factor this. The x to the 5, e to the x would come out. But really, what I want is already written in there, but e to the x. This turns into 6 plus x. Okay. But, like I said, this is gold. Now, what's the next one's derivative? Is it just the same thing? Is it just e to the negative three? Well, I'm going to ask you another question. If y equals 5, what's the derivative? Zero. Okay. Oh, it's three because there's This, no just, oh. it's, is it 3? Is there an x in this? Could you use your calculator and get some silly decimal number, right? Yeah. You don't need to, but all you have to recognize is this is a number. It's like decimal 2 or 17 or pi. The derivative is? Zero. zero. Do you guys recall chapter 2 or 3 or whatever? It's always messing me up. That's right. If it's a constant, just because it has a letter involved doesn't mean you can do that. Now, I think I've had previous questions. What's the derivative of pi squared? Some people will say 2 pi, and I know that. No, pi squared is a number, right? Greater than 9. It's just 0. If it's a constant, if it's a number with no x involved. Now, that's the introduction there. What about functions like, per turn it page e to the 6x. Now we got more inside the, uh, we got a function inside the function. We call that composition, right? I do, anyways. I don't know what you call it. Confusing. So, once we have something else, a variation on the e to the x, we've got to use the chain rule. Why? You got an inside and outside part of the function. e to the something is the outside function, 6x is the inside function. Does that make sense? So, in other words, use the chain rule. In other words, take the derivative of the outside function, then take the derivative of the inside function. Let's try this out. Now, I'm going to just remind us here. This is y equals my outside function, e to the, and I'm going to put a bracket here just so you think about that one. 6x. Does it clearly show now the composition? Outside, inside. So let's try this one out. dy by dx is equal to. What is the derivative of e to the something? I don't care what the inside is because we're going to leave it alone, right? Take the derivative of the outside. It's e to the. And that's 6x is just repeated, right? So we're going to just say, write it down exactly as is. Now I'm only using the brackets because, I, like I said, this would work for anything. It's e to the. Then you do the derivative of the inside times 6 in this case. Now, you won't see an answer book that looks like that. You will see uh, it will look like this 6 e to the 6x. And I think you could do that in your head, but I want you to see why, right? So when I actually do this, I write down just repeat e to the 6x. I leave a little space in front of it and then do the derivative of the inside 6. Write it out in front. Very similar to things you've done before. It's the chain rule. So when you have the chain rule with an exponential function, what's the general rule? If y is equal to e to the, we're going to use a u, 
U is some kind of thing with X is in it, okay? Then dy by dx is equal to. What is it equal to? The derivative of the outside function. So what's the derivative if we have e to the something? U. It's e to the something. E to the u. And this is not this u is a function. I'm not going to go on in a textbook would say where u is some function of x, blah, blah, blah. It's not a constant. And then blah, blah, blah. The derivative of the inside. So in this case, we're going to call it dy or du by dx. So times d. So whatever the u expression is, like 6x. And I chose those colors again, the u being green. I now realize I dropped the red. But so you can see the exact example above there, right? So I want you to try this. By the way, if you had a constant, though, if this is e squared here, this rule still works. Because you write down e squared, but what's the difference, or the derivative of 2? 0. e squared. And so it would zero it out. Anyways, if you applied this rule, mistaken. You don't need to consider it, though. Can I get you guys to try these three? Well, I would write C down again. How would you rewrite C, by the way? Five to the negative. You guys are five to the, and then I think you were going to say that too? Yeah. yeah. Negative two x. OK. I would do D. I would rewrite that one as x to the negative 3 if you want. <laughs> Two. When you get there, try those four. So the derivative, dy by dx in this case, I'm going to leave a space. It's itself times the derivative of negative x. Well, that's negative 1, so there we go. Here, dy by dx. I'm going to leave a space. It's 10 times. I would think you that. e to the 1 half x. The derivative of the half x is half. But I've got a 10 floating in front, right? 5. Now, if you wish, you could treat that with the uh, uh, quotient rule. But when I see something like this, I prefer to do it this way. And then if you need to get rid of the negative exponent, you can later. So I'm thinking this is 5 times the derivative of itself, e to the negative 2x. Now the derivative of the inside, negative 2 times the 5 that was in front, so negative 10, right? Now, if you want, you all understand that's negative 10 over e to the 2x, right? If you want it to, it depends. This one here, did you guys rewrite that one? Yeah. Okay, that's advisable. I'd say it's easier to operate. So e to the x squared times x cubed. Okay, so dy by dx? Uh, x to the yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you. you know, the whole purpose of bringing it up. <laughs> so, derivative of the first thing. So I know it involves an even space here e to the x squared. But the derivative of the x squared part is 2x. So that goes in front. Times the second thing left alone. Added to the first thing left alone. Derivative of the second thing. And because that's in the middle, I've got to put the negative 3 in a bracket, right? Negative 3, x to the? Negative 4. OK, I heard negative 4. Yeah. Good, because you subtracted. Why is it 2x equals? Sure. So the first, basically, we're just doing the derivative of the first thing, right? Yeah. Which is itself. That's this part. The oh, the times the derivative of the inner function, the chain. Yeah. 
two x is the derivative of x. Yeah, yeah. Now you could collect, not collect like terms, you could factor out the e x squared and tidy up the x to those a little bit, right? You could factor that up and stuff like that. You'd have it over x to the 4, 2x squared, minus 3, e to the x in the bracket, outside of it. Now, I know there's only four minutes and stuff like this, but just take a look at page 367. And it's kind of because I stalled a bit at the start. Well, no, we were looking at our, you had needed to look at your assessments. 